Hello team, welcome to the channel. Ooh, do we have a special one today? The Ducati Multistrada V4S, the world's most powerful adventure bike. Let's take this baby for a spin, see what she's made of. All right, all right, all right, here we go. What a treat. Retailing at £18,395 this motorcycle. Now to be completely transparent, this has, look at that, the Akraprovich exhaust on and I am told that is not just a slip on, it's actually the full system on their demonstrator so we're in for a bit of a treat today. Let's jump on board her and see what it's all about. It's a beautiful day today. Before we start the video I'd like to say a massive thank you to um, Oxford Ducati here where um, they have lent me this stunning bike. I actually rode the V2S a few days ago actually up here again so they've been really good to me. They're part of Blade Motorcycles down in Swindon. They got Harley, Kawasaki, Honda up here. Got everything. Check them out. I'll pop a link in the uh, description. Full disclosure I've actually, I did a whole video on this, a whole day's riding on this last week. Great film and then found out I didn't plug the audio in for the GoPro so completely couldn't use it so I have ridden this bike before it's not like a foot complete first ride I've done a day on it yeah I do know a bit about it let's get started so it's keyless ignition like all the um, high-end adventure bikes these days just have a listen to this exhaust it is lovely She's alive, that is so nice. Put it into touring mode to start off with. Well, now I'm doing that, I'll show you. There's a mode button there on the left, and you just literally flick up and down. Bang it into touring, there we go. I have ridden this bike. This is fully specced out, this bike. I rode the V2S a few days ago, and that was a lovely machine, but this, I would say, this is next level, really. This is high-end stuff. It's got all the technology you could ever ask for it's literally fully specced out and of course it has that wonderful ducati v4 engine in it whereas before the ducati multistrada 1260 was the uh, the twin so this is a really different prospect that ducati have gone for initial first thoughts of jumping on the bike riding position is very comfortable it's very sat upright you're you're sat in the bike I would say very much so with the sort of tank you know it's quite a, a, a large tank 22 litre tank in front of you and it feels like you're in the bike and the handlebars are very wide which is nice I think it makes it feel very very sort of sturdy god that exhaust is purring away back there it's a beast <laughs> yeah the, so the riding position is really good I'm just about on the balls of my feet I am five foot nine we'll go into specifics a little bit later on have a have a stop and chat yeah and this ducati multistrada so i have ridden all of the adventure bikes all of the adventure bikes the big top end adventure bikes the bmw gf the uh the ktm 1290 super adventure s the brand new tiger 1200 honda africa twin so i've had a good go on all of them and have i saved the best till last it's gonna be very interesting let's find out so on some slightly quicker roads here, dual carriageway. First off the screen's really nice and easy. It's a one lever lever here. Push up, push down, very easy. Now let's test out the first bit of tech on this, the rear facing radar. And there you go, you've just seen it. Each wing mirror has a light on it. It basically it detects your blind spot. So when a vehicle's in your blind spot, it flashes. Here you go, here's a white white pickup truck coming just take there you go it's it's really good i was using it the other day it just works seamlessly and if you're looking ahead as you do on longer journeys you know you often you may have a moment where you forget about the the, the faster lane on the right it just put works perfectly in your peripheral vision that light just to let you know there's a vehicle there i a hundred percent would still look over my shoulder I'm not trusting the tech that much, but it's a really, really nice feature that just works seamlessly. You don't have to do anything, it just works. Okay, moving on to the second piece of tech, major bit of tech on this, the V4S, the forward-facing radar. So it's cruise control. Oh, car coming up on the blind side. This is so good. So it's cruise control. We're gonna sit behind this lorry 
normal cruise control, just press on, press set. There we go, it's at 57 miles an hour. So a bit of a test, I'm gonna speed up, put my cruise speed up to 65, which is quicker than what this lorry in front is doing. However, with the forward facing radar, it's gonna hold me at a set distance from this lorry in front. Let's go even more, I'll put it up to 70. So I'm speeding up automatically there, not even touching the throttle. Okay, it's a little bit scary now. This is a bit close. Okay, it's slowed down. Definitely slowed way down, 62. That is a lot closer than I would like, if I'm being honest, actually. But it has definitely worked, it slowed down. That was a bit nerve wracking. Okay, now let's see. So I'm set at 70. Let's see if I indicate and pull out from behind this lorry, what happens now? Right, I'm not touching the throttle, pulling out. Whoa! Immediately speeds up, straight up to 70 miles an hour. And overtaking the lorry. And then I'm gonna pull back in front of the lorry. Yeah, all good. Dab a brake to cancel that. The forward-facing radar works very, very well. Same as on the KTM 1290 Super Adventure. They're seamless. You don't have to turn it on or off. You really don't have to do anything. You just press set on like a normal cruise control and the radar takes care of the rest. It, trust me, it really works. I'm real, real fan of it. Anything that improves safety on motorbikes and doesn't make it more complicated I think is a great thing and on on the the Ducati Multistrada with the rear facing and the forward facing radar big thumbs up five star it works seamlessly just a quick one before we get some nicer roads see how she handles and and goes just on these these dual carriageway we're at a 50 speed limit now but it's so comfortable um, touring and longer miles. You could really just plow out miles on this all day. The wind protection is very good. It's got these little plastic wings there. Seem to be keeping a lot of wind off my shoulders. There's hardly any wind across my torso. I'm getting a tiny bit of wind to the top of my helmet, but that really is it. The wind protection is very good. This screen's quality. The riding position is so comfy you could bang out some really big touring miles on this. And that added power for on the motorway here, I mean, I'm hardly using any of it, but it's just so nice, isn't it? Even if you're not using all that, all of that, it's 170 brake horsepower. It's just so nice to have it there, you know? When you know it's there and you can just roll on and it is immediate. It's just such a lovely, engaging, premium uh, feel. Okay guys, as we are stopped here, there's a bit of a straight up there and I've got an itching to open it up to see what she goes like. <laughs> Let's show you. So if we put her in, just press mode, dial up into sport mode. As you can see here, if you can see that, everything's adjustable within the different modes. And these dials really are, it's really intuitive to use. I would say actually a fair bit better than the V2S. I found a little bit tricky to use. Um, this is really clear. It's, it's a premium quality feeling switch gears all backlit dash is very clever anyway just listen to the exhaust again it's a real treat oh there she is let's see what she's made of as i can tell you from the other day it's so nice cruising really comfortable and relaxed but when you get when you give her some yeah she goes 170 brake horsepower, 125 newton meters of torque. And the quick shifter is sweet. Woo! That wasn't even full throttle. Ah, it's a screamer at the top end. Screamer. It's that four cylinder. Beautiful. The quick shifter down as well is, is beauty. Handling's very settled. It's not as um, it's not as quick to turn in as the KTM 1290. It's not as as quick and nippy as that. But once you're turned in, it's very confidence-inspiring, and the suspension is brilliant. Yeah, it it moves. It's really quick. Come into a 30. Calm down a bit. 
way to describe it, Ducati have, and this is Ducati's words actually, they've, the firing pulse of the engine order. Um, so it's a V4, but they're trying to make it slightly more reminiscent of a, of a V-twin. Um, or a twin twin engine, be it a boxer, a parallel, or a V-twin. It seems like all of the uh, adventure bike manufacturers are trying to do that. Like, for example, Triumph with their 2022 tw Tiger 1200. They've gone with the T-plane triple, uh, T-plane crank, to make it give you more torque lower down, which I really like. I think that's great for an adventure bike, and you want that, really. You don't want to be ragging it out to get to get the power and this is exactly what Ducati have done with this V4 here they've changed the firing pulse order I gotta be honest I'm not 100% what what how technical they've gone there but it seems to have worked they've done a real trick on it it it's got the smoothness and premium feel of a core for of a four cylinder which I really like the torque is right there it's got the premium smoothness of the four cylinder but you can feel those pulses that they've engineered in it's not a quick vibe it's more of a it's a good way to describe it a pulse like a a deeper sort of throb I suppose it feels really really quality rightio let's go for a bit of a a bit of a chat bit of a sit down and a talk about some of the more technical features on the bike and then we'll go for another spin. So before we settle in for a deep and meaningful chat about the Multistrada, we're here at Linear Fisheries which is a spot I've found near Abingdon, uh, Ducati, Oxford. Beautiful place. Sun's always out here for some reason, just got lucky with the parking. There's a little bit of a gravel track up here. It's not really off-roading, is it? But it's nice to um, just test how it feels, like standing up on the bike. If I pop her in enduro mode, nice and easy. There we go, so that softens off the traction control, ABS and, and engine response, etc. You can get a feel for what it's like to stand up. So it's got the 19 inch front wheel. This demo bike I'm riding's actually got the spoked wheels as well. So it's, it's more biased, edged towards off-roading. And standing up, it's actually really comfortable. The handlebars feel, feel quite comfortably high enough more so than they did on the V2S that I rode the other day. Yeah, it's not bad. I mean, I personally wouldn't go any more than this off-roading, I don't think, on a, an expensive bike like this, but I can imagine it's doable. Put some knobbly, half knobbly tires on it, grab the front brake, that's as far as my off-roading knowledge goes. Um, it feels good. It's a bit of fun. You can take it down gravel tracks, that is, that is for sure. Yeah, I think the first word really that springs to mind for, for the Ducati Multistrada B4S is just premium. As soon as you jump on it, the, the switch gear, the TFT screen, the motor when you start it up, especially with that full, uh, full system exhaust. And the engine, the thing they've done with that V4, the changing the firing pulses so that it, it's more reminiscent of a V-twin, it is it, really, really worked. It's quality premium feel of a V4 motor, but with that torque that's sort of almost immediately there of a V-twin, which is great for adventure bikes and sort of really sports touring, I think, as well. It's just more relaxing, uh, more usable for everyday speeds. Yeah, and just the build quality, the grips, um, the suspension, the brakes, it's all put together really, really nicely. It's a premium, premium adventure motorcycle. All right, so let's just go over, gonna go over a few of the uh, features, suspension, brakes, etc. So up front, the suspension, you've got 50 millimeter diameter, fully adjustable, electronic Ducati Skyhook suspension with 170 millimeters of travel. Coming around to the rear, probably could have put that slightly better, uh, there's the, the rear spring. It's a fully adjustable monoshock. Again, it's electronic adjustable Ducati Skyhook and it has 180 millimeters travel. Okay, so moving up to the front brakes, we've got twin 320 millimeter discs with four piston monoblock Brembo calipers. Onto the rear brake, it's a single 265mm disc uh, with a Brembo two-piston floating caliper. Okay guys, so coming on to the weight of the, the big multi, the V4. So it's nothing special really, it's, it's very similar. I find these days everyone, obviously weight on a motorbike is very important. It makes a big difference. All of these big bore adventure bikes, maybe 
bar the GS in its massive adventure form, which is pushing, you know, 265 kilograms. This here is 248 kilograms wet. If you compare that to the KTM, it's very similar. The KTM dry weight is 220 kilograms, so that it, you know they're around 250. I would say the KTM actually, there's nothing wrong with this. It feels good this way on the road. It feels fantastic. It turns in really well. Maneuvering around, manhandling around, it's not a problem. However, I would say the best of the bunch, probably the KTM 1290 I personally find, mainly due to the bladder fuel tanks it's got down at the bottom. It just feels ridiculously low down, the weight on that on that KTM. Sorry, I'm going about on about the KTM, so it's a catty review, but it's just comparing the two bikes. Yeah, the KTM is freakishly low down the weight it feels. It it's really is amazing. Yeah, 248 kilograms, big adventure bike. This is sort of what they're weighing at the moment. Doesn't feel heavy, feels really nice on the road. The weight is higher up than the GS or the KTM Super Adventure. You can feel that actually, but it's not, it's not bad at all. Um, no problems. Okay, seat height, another fun one. 840 millimeters, lowest setting. Adjustable 20 millimeters up to 860 millimeters. This is in its lower seat setting right now at 840. I'm five foot nine, and I can actually just about um, flat foot it in the in this setting. So, as I was saying earlier, it really feels like you're sitting in this bike. Very similar to the V2S Multistrada as well. Your nice high handlebars, nice wide width handlebars, and yeah, the screen comes up nice and high. It really feels like you're in the bike and and quite over that front end to be honest which is is nice for on the road it feels like you can sort of don't know Lee, you can sort of be pushing the front end down a bit it's just it's a it's a good good feeling that's slightly different to the other adventure bikes it does feel ergonomically slightly different setup at the front end here okay so another thing to quickly go over whilst we're here sound check on that pipe the Acro exhaust. Um, when I rode it the other day, I thought it was crazily loud. I was like, what the hell? But the dealer was actually just telling me at Oxford Ducati that it's actually the full system. And they have said, I mean, I'm taking their word for it, it's an £8,000 exhaust system for the full system, full Acro system for this bike. Eight grand. <laughs> That's, I mean, it's a nice system. They're really nice, but that is a lot of money. A lot of cash for, a, for an exhaust. Um, on your bike, but you be the judge, see what it sounds like. Alright guys, so yeah, those are some of the technical features of this um, yeah, mighty, mighty impressive motorcycle. What do you think of the looks as well? I think it looks just premium as well compared to the last 1260. I think the 1260 wasn't the best looks for me. So this has a 19 inch front, 17 rear, and this has the optional spoked wheels as well, which I think make it look class, really, really cool. Just looks more grown up to me, more grown up, more of a serious, well put together premium piece of kit it's a quality <laughs> quality bike excuse my rough notes here i'm just going to go over what you get with the v4s over the v4 because the v4s is a fair chunk of change more expensive i think it's about four grand or something more but you're getting cruise control radar at the front with your blind spot monitoring so your radar on the rear as well which is tucked in there ducati connect interface on the on the tft screen which is really good for navigation the quick shifter which is sweet cornering light built-in navigation on the TFT, hill hold control and the electronic suspension, the Ducati Skyhook adjustable. It's a fair bit of wedge to go for the 4S but I, I was really thinking about it the other day, what would I go for? And if I had, obviously if you had the cash you'd go for this one but it would be tricky not to go for this because it's such a big deal to me anyway. The quick shifter on bikes like these like just makes or breaks it, doesn't quite break it but the suspension, the nav, it's just, I think it's a good worthy thing to um, consider the 4S. She's alive! So just a few of the more more practical features up front as you'd expect on a motorcycle at this price. I've actually got my phone plugged in, a, a little DIN 12 volt charger there and a, a little phone case here which 
I have seen you can't fit the the huge iPhones, the what is it, the Max, the Pro Max, they don't fit. But a normal one will, and it's got a little uh, USB charger in there. Just jumping back on though, it can be such a little um a little pushy cat this <laughs> this bike as well. Like I'm actually just keeping it in enduro pro mode or enduro mode, sorry, not pro. It's lovely, comfortable cruiser. The suspension's feels quite nice and quite sort of nice and soft and forg forgivable um, for a technical term. The throttle response is softened right off and you've just got that lovely pulsing from the V4 just sort of cruising you along and the handling is so accurate. Possibly my favourite mode, enduro mode, it's so comfortable on the road. Yeah this is an incredibly capable machine guys, is it the best? of the big adventure bikes i don't know that's such a i think that's the beauty of motorcycling i always find it tricky to say which is the best because basically they're all different i think like you've got the ktm 1290 super adventure which is super fast um it's super quick handling really agile it's, it's an animal it's like it's poking you it's go 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 quicker rag me and it is amazing fun and an incredible machine and then you get the you get the GS obviously which is incredibly comfortable for long long tours long traveling great off road and you know a bit more relaxed but it's still got that fun character of a of a twin with the boxer engine and then you've got the Africa twin which is also very relaxed and then obviously the Tiger which is a triple slightly different and then you have the, the Ducati Multistrada which I think is definitely up there with um, having a poke at the best shot really if you had to say it's the V4 engine so nice it's really relaxing wind protection's good and you can just cruise and bumble along but then if you want to get on it it's got it's pretty mental at the top end as well it's not like the ktm though it's not like immediate torque poking you it's much more linear power curve this smoother but it is effing quick um, <laughs> when you use it so there's my uh, there's my conclusion as to whether it's the best i I'd struggle to say which is the best because that's the beauty of motorcycling. Everyone can have something different. There's, there's something out there for everyone now and they're all just so good. But if I had to say, oh mate, I don't know, I don't think I can say, but this is 100% up there for top spot. It's a really, really, possibly the most premium, I think, and well put together of the adventure bikes. Let's say that. I might get some stick for that. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll uh, catch you in the next video. If you like the video, please don't to forget to subscribe and enjoy your summers the sun's coming out i'm feeling good for it getting out doing test rides going riding a bit more great for the mental health stay happy get out on your motorbikes go for a cruise enjoy the world enjoy the countryside spread good vibes much love red ang revival ciao bella ah one last thing i forgot about the fuel consumption <laughs> on the big multi. I'm actually not doing too bad today, but I haven't been um, a absolutely spanking it like some people may do. I've done 40 miles per gallon, but I've heard of some people getting, um, yeah, in the 30s, mid 30s to sometimes low 30s. So that is, that's bad for a motorbike. That's not, not good fuel consumption. So yeah, worth bearing that in mind. It's got a 22 litre tank, so it's a fair sized tank, but yeah, you're not going to be doing major miles um, just because of the fuel consumption is, is yeah, it's, it's bad. But hey, who buys a Ducati and their love motorcycle for the fuel consumption? Mind you, it could get expensive if you ride a lot. Anyway, catch you later, guys.